Uh, one question that I get a lot is, will testosterone make me more aggressive? That's something that I hear a lot. Um, you know, we have archetypes of personalities. We have alpha males, beta males. To me, those are flawed archetypes. Nobody's just an alpha, nobody's just an, a beta. We're a combination of all those. There's even another psychologist who came up with another word, uh, the sigma male. The sigma male tends to be a more loner. It's more of an alpha, but more of a loner, kind of doesn't own, it doesn't conform to society. So we know the alpha tends to be the more, the leader wants to achieve success, tends to be very driven, but may have some negative connotations also. Maybe a little too machismo, a little too violent, um, ego may be a little too high. Then we have the beta male, the beta male, and it, it's not a negative thing. Some guys work better in a group. You know, you, if you take, for example, Apple, you have Steve Jobs as the alpha males, but you need all the beta males as the computer guys who are behind the scene and work together well to make the company well. So we're a combination of all this. When I teach my guys, I tell them, I can take you for an over-aggressive alpha and I bring you in what I call the theta meal. When your hormones are balanced, you eat well, you exercise and your mindset is better, now you can be an alpha, but with compassion. You can be an alpha that has empathy. Or if you are more of a beta, now I upgrade you that you can still work well with people, be well in the system, but you have more leadership capabilities. You have more vision that you can be better uh, because you feel better. So to me, when a guy comes to me, I look at numbers, but we spend a lot of time talking about what the goals are and what this can help you achieve. Yeah. Great talk, Rudy. Yeah, great talk. Uh, You're as passionate as I could have imagined. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, my guys, I call it my Theta tribe. Uh, we, you know, I want to revolutionize, not just me, it's all of us. We need more people like you, Stephen, to really put it out there. And in a very compassionate, very smart uh, way to, exp to, to present it to both patients and physicians so that we all work together. I'm never the antagonistic guy who's going to go against a lot of the, cl the, the traditional clinical medicine, but we need to raise awareness. This cannot just be that it's you and me doing this or a few physicians. My hope is that in 10, 15 years, that this becomes part of the traditional model, that eventually that testosterone replacement gets covered really well by insurance. Right now, for your testosterone to be covered, you have to be basically half dead. Your numbers have to be at the bottom to really put it through insurance. So uh, this needs to change. And yeah. That comes again with knowledge. Okay, to wrap this up, Rudy, how can people uh, reach you if they would want to? Well, so we work with the Medical Health Institute. So you can go on our website, uh, www.medicalhealthinstitute. I also have, so we also have a social media. Um, I just started my social media account called Low T Doc. Low T Doc. So this is something, again, I, I'm not more of an old school guy. I never was into social media. But this is the best platform to reach people and educate. So there's going to be a lot more where I really want to um, bring my presence there. So we have the website and the social media. And hopefully, Stephen, we keep this conversation going. We keep educating and sensitizing people with this. Yeah, sure thing. We're going to do that, really. Thank you so much for the talk, man. My pleasure. It was great. Thank you, Stephen.